Hey you guys, Steve Bubble. That's me for WhipFit coming to you on a Wednesday evening here on the beautiful island of Maui. Aloha. Um, and uh, tonight is question and answer time. Um, I get a bunch of questions, um, uh, private message, DM'd, uh, emailed, or um, on the comments here on YouTube, and I try to answer all of them. If they're constructive, um, I try to answer them either directly in the feed or I do stuff like this where I take a bunch of questions and answer them all as truthfully as I can, good or bad. Um, and sometimes I will tell you that um, some of the miscommunication or the fault lies on me, and I will own that. So let's do some question and answers, all right? Um, I got a bunch of them right here. Um, if you ever have a question, write it uh, in the comments or message me, and then uh, I'll try to get to them, all right? Because I do read them. I read them all. So the first question has to do with... Why do you never wear a shirt? <laughs> Valid question. I live in Maui, Hawaii, okay? It is beautiful, it is warm, and there's no reason to wear a shirt. I wear a shirt to work, I wear a shirt uh, when I go do stuff, uh, you know, out to dinner. I do wear shirts, but I'm at home, it is still humid, it's about to be December, and it's still hot. So, it's not the worst thing for me not to wear a shirt, everybody. It's okay. You know, I have pants on. You know, I always have pants on when, well, not always. I always have pants on. No. So, but right now I do. So, that's the first question, and that's kind of a silly question. So, the next question is, what is the difference between indoor cycle and spin? And I will um, say that's a great question. Um, and it's something that I actually probably misexplained at some point. Um, and it was to my own detriment. Um, there is a difference between indoor cycle classes and spin classes. And a lot of the posts that I used to have here on YouTube, I called them spin. And I should have called them cycle. Because spin... Um, spinning is a very specific program and you have to be certified in spin to teach spin with that title. If you are not certified in that program, you are certified as an indoor cycle instructor. I am certified as an indoor cycle instructor, not spin. Um, so all those times I posted spin and the negative comments I got back for it were people expecting the spin program and they were getting indoor cycle. So that's on me. That really is on me. I didn't used to think it was a big deal to say spin or cycle, and sometimes in a hurry, I'll just say, oh, I'm teaching spin class. Um, but it really is specific. Um, spin has become the generalized term that we use for it, but if, I'm, if you're gonna do promotional stuff and things like I do, it has to be either spin or indoor cycle. So I'm an indoor cycle instructor, not a spin instructor. Um, so indoor cycle has a wide parameter of uh, different techniques and skills and styles, but it is not spin, all right? A lot of people say, I'm taking a spin class, and it might not be an actual spin certified class. So that's the difference. You can look it up online and stuff like that. It's pretty commonly known, and I, you know, um, that's on me. It's my fault that I didn't differentiate right from the start. I should have, okay? So, uh, thanks. Um, I can admit when I'm wrong. I'm happy to do it. Uh, this one, this question, I've gotten a lot. Um, so there's one full uh, indoor cycle class on here. I think it was my birthday maybe a year ago, two years ago, and it's always all Madonna because I love Madonna. Um, and on that birthday class, which has been viewed like a lot, like um, a lot, like thousands of times, which is really cool, um, there is a, uh, a song, uh, Dress You Up, and it is Madonna. I only use Madonna. I never use someone that's trying to sound like Madonna on a Madonna song. So it's Madonna's Dress You Up. And a lot of people are like, what is that remix? So it is the Liam Keegan Extended Remix. And Liam, L-I-A-M, Keegan, K-E-E-G-A-N. Liam Keegan extended remix. I have no idea at this point where I even found it. Um, so a couple of you asked specifically about that song. So there you go. That's that. Um, okay. Question and answer is still continuing. Uh, your moves are dangerous for the body. Um, I used to get this a lot more with that spin cycle um, explanation thing. Um, I will tell you right now, I've been doing this now for about five years. Um, the only person that's ever fallen off their bike, one, is me, because I went to reach down to grab a towel and I didn't quite make it and I just went over. Um, I've never had an injury and I can tell you I have had pregnant women take my class. I have had um, 
elderly people take my class. I have people taken people have taken my class with an absolute broken leg, and they put their cast up, or their crutches off to the side. Um, I you know I have people of all shapes, sizes, and ages take my class. I had one woman. She were, she did not want, and she was an older woman, so I was not going to fight with her. She did not want to spin cycle in class with sneakers. She wanted to wear her uh, flip-flops, and here on here in Hawaii, we call those slippers. She wanted to wear her slippers. She didn't go very fast, um, so I let her. She was never injured. No one has ever been injured, because when you do stuff physically, you kind of figure out your limits. I tell people all the time, if you don't want to do something, you don't have to. Everything is optional. So, to say that my moves are dangerous, I guess you could say that, I've never experienced it. I've never had anyone get hurt in my class ever in five years. So I'm very careful about it. So um, I hope that's not true. I always try to come up with moves that potentially keep us stabilized either in our saddle or if we're out of our saddle, we're holding onto our handlebars or at least one hand's on the handlebar. And yeah, sometimes both hands come off, but it's optional. I don't yell at anybody. So I don't really think my moves are dangerous. I don't. So... All right, staying, thank you for that question. Staying in the world of a cycle, how do you set up your bike, your indoor cycle bike or your spin bike, okay? I think, and I could be wrong, I think it's um, a general uh, uh, um, procedure, if you will, for both type of bikes, spin or cycle, because the bikes are ultimately the same. They may change a little bit in style and finesse and things like that, and gears and all the bells and whistles literally. Um, but here's my guideline. When you stand right next to your spin bike, you want your seat to hit at about your hip, okay? So your seat should hit close to your hip. Not exact, all right, you guys? So the next guideline that I do is take your knuckles, put it right up to the edge of your handlebars right there in front of you. From your knuckles to your elbow is the distance between your handlebars and your seat. So have that seat line right up with your elbow. So you got hip, you got seat, and then when you sit down on your bike, you never want your leg to be completely straight. You don't wanna go straight down with your leg. You always want a little bend in your knee. You don't wanna feel like you're reaching. If you ever feel like you're reaching too far to get to the pedals, you're too high up. The counter to that is if you're sitting and you feel really squatted down and your legs are kind of like, you know, that much, you're down too low. My final suggestion is always comfort. If something doesn't feel right, it's probably not. So just keep adjusting that bike, handlebars, seat, um, until you find the level where you feel comfortable. And always, it doesn't matter what type of class it is, it is okay to ask the instructor, is this right? I set people up every single class. It never fails. And that's what I'm supposed to do. So um, go ahead and ask, and you know maybe try those guidelines. Maybe it'll help. All right, cool. Um, Oh, still in cycle class. Um, why do you not face the class? Um, for me, for my uh, class where I teach, we have 30 bikes, um, stadium, you know, stack stadium style, um, and I ride with everyone. So everyone is directly behind me. What you guys don't see is the full wall of mirrors that's right in front of us. So um, I'm I have my back to them, but I see everything right there in front of me because um, they're reflected right back at me. And that way we're all in sync. So when I say do something on the right, we're all on the right. When we're doing stuff on the left, it's all on the left. And I can do it with them versus if I was facing them, it'd be the opposite every time. So I am kind of riding with the class. I'm just not facing them. And I have a mic, so you know it's not like my voice doesn't carry back behind me. So. It's a fair question. Um, probably if you're not seeing the, the mirrors in front, you're like, what the hell? Why are they all facing a wall? They're mirrors. All right. Okay. So I'm also a personal trainer because um, I teach yoga. I do uh, cycle and I do personal training. So um, lifting weights. How often should you lift weights? Um, that's a really tricky question. So I'm only going to give you my experience because that's all I can comment on. I lift weights. Um, I used to lift weights every day. 
that's what I used to think. I would just go and lift every single day. And I wasn't understanding the idea that I could actually burn myself out and start actually um, depleting my results by overtraining, overworking out. So now I do, I think, what is it, four days a week? three days off, I believe. I'm off, I, I don't work out Saturday or Monday or Tuesday. So I take Saturday off and I'm off Monday and Tuesday. So that's three <laughs> plus four. Four plus three equals seven, right? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I'm good. So four days on, three days off for me. So the three days off Keep in mind, I may not be lifting weights, but I am teaching spin or cycle, or I'm doing yoga, um, or uh, some sort of other physical activity. Sometimes I run, so there's that. When I am working out for the four days, this is how it breaks down for me, okay? One day is always back and biceps in that combination, which can be changed, but back for me right now, it's back and biceps, chest and triceps, legs, one full session of legs, and then shoulders and abs, okay? Um, and these two can kind of spill over into each other. Um, so, and every single one of these has abs. The day that we have do more abs, we do more abs. But there's always abs at the end of it, okay? So that's how it breaks down for me right now. And then how do you lift the weights? Um, for me, right now we're doing this thing, um, me and my soon-to-be husband, we're doing this thing where we're uh, starting off at really high reps at not our heaviest weight, and then slowly working up to heavier weight each week, okay, as the reps go down. So right now we just started a new cycle, so we're doing 12 to 15 reps. That means you're doing 12 to 15 things, biceps, whatever, you know, triceps, 12 to 15 at not your heaviest. Next week, we'll drop down to, I think it goes to 8 to 10, and the weight will go up, maybe 5 pounds, maybe 10 pounds. The following week will be 6 to 8, and then uh, and the weight will go up, and then our heaviest, where we're at our heaviest weight, uh, will be like 3 to 5. So I hope that all makes sense. Um, how That's how we're doing it right now. Um, but a really common way to do it is like if you're going just to work out, do three sets, one set at 15, your next set at 12, your final set at 10. 15, 12, 10 reps. That means you, you do lift a weight or do something 15 times, 12 times, 10 times. And each time uh, for that, I like to start at my heaviest and go down to my lowest. Is that right? Drop the weight? No. So start at, uh, try to go up each time so it's the opposite. See, I get confused too, it's okay. So with your 15, 12, 10, say you start at 15 pounds, then you go to 20 pounds, and then maybe 25 pounds. So as your number of reps decrease, your weight increases, if that makes sense. Please ask questions if I got that all screwed up and made your head like, what? Um, I talk um, about this stuff a lot, and sometimes I have to really think about what I'm saying because sometimes I'm checked out of my own conversation. But that's um, what um, I do for uh, lifting weights right now. Another great question, thank you. Uh, playlists, where are my playlists? How do I get my playlists? So um, I'm really fortunate to have a really great um, network of people that send me music that they hear all over the place and I'm constantly listening to music. Like uh, commercials have some great music sometimes snuck in there. Uh, you know, out and about at uh, the gym has great music. Um, if you like are doing um, a taxi or an Uber, sometimes they'll have something on their NPR. Like I find it all over the place. Uh, of course, Spotify, iTunes, um, Apple Music. Um, I use all of it. Um, I need to be better about putting my playlists up. I try to put them on Instagram at WhitFit, same as here on YouTube, but also um, I try to put them on uh, my Facebook page. Um, my name is Steven with a PH and the last name is Whipple, W-H-I-P-P-L-E, um, hence WhitFit. So you can also find them on Facebook and you can be my friend if you wanna. So that's where my playlists are. And the playlists I just put together based on songs that I like and things that might come together as a nice routine. Um, these are really great questions, everybody. Um, this is a good one. Um, to be an instructor, what does it take as far as credentials, okay? So um, great question. 
if you're going to be any type of instructor or personal trainer, you need to be certified. There's lots of different certifications. There's gold standards, silver standards, bronze, um, and some other facilities will take many, uh, many different types of certifications, okay? But you have to be certified in whatever field you're teaching, and then you also need to be insured. You have to have insurance in case something does happen to someone in your class, you are covered. A lot of places like a million dollar policy, a lot of places like a two million dollar policy, and that sounds like, what, that's crazy. That's obviously not how much you pay. Um, coverage uh, varies. Usually it's like maybe 100 bucks, 200 bucks. I can't remember, it's been a minute. I probably need to update my own. Um, but you, you have to be uh, certified and insured, which I am both in all of these uh, areas, in personal training, in cycle, and in um, yoga, which you can get certified specifically in yoga, if you want to make that your main focus or yoga can also fall under the umbrella of group fitness which I am certified in and then that way I can teach other classes uh, if I need to like chair yoga or like a boot camp type class things like that that's group fitness so a good question thanks um, okay <laughs> um, why don't you do a better job videoing your classes um, I believe that the comment I made that into a question. I believe the comment was, if you're gonna do it, buddy, at least do it well. I try, I really do. Um, I have a full life, uh, I try to, you know, I, I, I have clients, I teach, I plan to teach. Um, I have a personal life, uh, holidays. I have everything that you guys do, um, I do as well. And when I get to a class, sometimes I really don't have the time to maybe set up the GoPro or the, the, the MacBook or whatever, the iPad, um, as well as I should. I'm just trying to get a new class out there for all of you who want one. It's not perfect. And uh, sometimes the camera is wrong. Sometimes it's in weird little um, sections. Uh, and that's for a couple reasons. One is the GoPro is such high resolution that it can only uh, video in small increments. And there is um, an app which you can get, which I have now gotten, that will connect all the pieces together and make one long class. The other side of that is it takes a long time to upload. So this is what has happened many times. I have uploaded a complete class, um, put it all together, uploaded it, and then I get a um, copyright infringement notice, which I find very strange because yes, I'm using music by the actual artist, but I'm talking all over it. Uh, there's no way anyone could possibly get a song in its entirety and enjoy listening to it because I, without a doubt, talk all the time, clearly. So when I get that copyright infringement, I have to go back in and section by section figure out which song is the issue. They've Actually, YouTube, uh, YouTube's gotten better about it. They now list the songs uh, or the song that is um, causing the problem. And when you get one of those, it mutes the entire class. Not just that song, the entire class. So then I have to take it down, break it up into little sections, and then re-upload each different piece after I've taken out the problematic song. It takes a long time. And going back to the point of, to, for a person that doesn't have a lot of time, sometimes I just don't have all that. I have a new class ready to go up. Um, I think it's done pretty well. Um, so, you know, I do try, and I understand the comment about if you're going to do it, do it well. I try. Um, and uh, I'm getting uh, <laughs> zero dollars for all of this. Um, there's, you know, I'm not getting paid for any of this. It's YouTube, you know. A lot of people figure out how to make money from their YouTube channel. I'm not interested in that. I'm just doing this because I love what I do. So there's, you know, I, I'm putting in a lot of time happily, um, but I'm definitely not getting anything financial back. I get joy and a quality of life and all that. So, you know, maybe, <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> With love and respect. Um, Okay, another great question, because this is a question and answer uh, uh, section of our show. <laughs> How do you start doing yoga? I know that seems like a silly question, but it's actually pretty good. Um, you start doing yoga by being awful at it. Um, you just are. You know, we're, most of us, I can't say all, most of us are not naturally inclined to be super flexible just because. So you start... Uh, 
going to yoga. How do you start going to yoga? You start by going. You pick a class. You try to find out about that class. Um, if you're new to yoga, I recommend like a beginner's class or a foundations class. Or what's really nice right now that I love is restorative yoga. It's like a much more gentler, backed off version of like a flow class where you're doing a lot of standing poses and maybe even some advanced stuff. But it's okay to stumble into a flow class or like an advanced class too. I started in Los Angeles and the first class I went to, it was not a beginner's class. And I will tell you, I could not do half of the stuff. And I looked around and I was like, actually like, are you kidding me right now with this? I can't do that. Why would I want to? There is no way that my foot should be behind my head under any circumstance. Um, I still can't do that. Uh, and there's a lot in yoga I still can't do. And that's the point. You do what you can do. Everyone thinks that they're looking at you. No one's looking at you because everyone else is really busy trying to like get their stuff together too and try to do what they can do. So just go. Just go. You will never regret trying something new. You will only regret wondering if you could have or should have. So just go. And it's super good. So super good for you. So just go to yoga. Sometimes when guys go, um, I tell them to call it broga. So just go to broga, bro. Yeah, namaste, bro. So, all right, final question. And these were some really good questions. Um, so thank you for that. Um, I really do appreciate all of you that tune in, uh, look forward to classes, and listen to me ramble like this. Like I just posted one, I think, yesterday called Blah Blah Blah. This really ties in quite well with that. Hmm. So... What is intermittent fasting? Um, I posted a few videos. That's the final question, and it's, I'm glad it's the final question because it's a big concept. Um, I posted a few videos, so what I'm going to say is just look at those videos. Um, I tweak it and fine-tune it the more that I do it, but it is a it is my surefire way when I want to lose you know five pounds or even a little bit more or I'm feeling sluggish or I'm tired of eating all the time it is my guaranteed way that I go to to lose some weight and especially around the holidays it's kind of nice so maybe check it out um, I know I have at least I think four uh, postings about it on here so um, just check it out it's um, you know in a 24-hour period it breaks down into three sections eight hours of sleep which I know we don't really get eight hours of consuming food and eight hours of fasting. So eight times three is 24. Um, simply put, I like to stack my day as follows. I get up in the morning and I don't eat anything until like one or two o'clock. So the morning is my fast. Uh, I will work out and then I will consume food throughout the uh, late afternoon, early evening, and then it is time for bed. So um, that's how I stack it. So essentially, I'm not eating for 16 hours because I stack my sleep time right next to my fasting time. So every day when I wake up, I'm not eating till like around 1 or 2 o'clock. I'm modifying that right now because it works so well. I'm now going to back off from that and go back to a regular schedule five days a week. Um, and, uh, yeah, five days a week I'm going to fast and I'll take the weekends off. Two days I'll just eat regularly. Um, when I get up, I'll have some food or whatever. So um, keep those questions coming, especially about that, because it's big. It's big. Um, the guy who is a real uh, official uh, person that has a lot of knowledge about it, his name is James. James Clear. So if you want to learn a lot about fasting, look him up. And then uh, it's really kind of cool. It's a way of eating that uh, you can conform to your lifestyle to make it work for you. All right, that's it. Those are all the questions. Um, I really appreciate all of them. I read all of them. Uh, and I will stop talking as soon as I say um, happy holidays to everyone. Um, whatever your holiday is for you, I hope it is a good one. Um, and here's to 2018. Set some goals. Let's do it in 2018. All right. Aloha.